Hey again, space fans. Jack here on assignment in Los Angeles this week with another Starbase update for you. Could there be another high bay going up at the production site? We'll discuss this, plus everything else that happened this week, including what Ship 25 could be doing at Massey's, Ship 26's roll back to the production site, and the nearly complete installation of shielding on the orbital launch mount's exterior. Let's get started. Starting off the week, Ship 26 was lifted off of Pad A. Ship 26 had completed two cryogenic proof tests before this. It's unknown whether they've finished this part of the pre-launch test campaign, and Ship 26 is ready for Raptor engine installation, or if they'll need to perform more work on it. After removal from Pad A, but before it can roll back, the lifting squid, which is the silly name we've given to the sling that attaches to the nose cone, must be removed. Here, you can see that happening. Also in the list of things that have to happen for a vehicle to roll up or down Highway 4, Ship 26 was then hooked up to nitrogen tanks to help keep it pressurized during the move. Just like a soda can is relatively brittle when empty, but relatively strong when full and unopened, aka pressurized, ships and boosters are the same way. Therefore, they're kept pressurized when they're moved, and most of the other times as well. Preparations completed, Ship 26 then rolled back to the production site on the night of the 28th. Once again, we don't yet know whether the next step will be for Ship 26 to receive Raptor engines or whether more testing is required, but we'll make sure to keep an eye on that and let you know as soon as we do. Maybe there will be no further testing and Ship 26 will just be scrapped. We truly don't know. Back at the production site next to the rocket garden, a new crane has been assembled. It's an LR-1750 crane. It was transported piece by piece to Starbase over the past few weeks and is now finally assembled and ready for action. What action, you may ask? Well, this crane could be of use on the potential, and I stress here, potential, construction of a new high bay at the production site. We'll touch more on this in a bit. Right next to the rocket garden and new crane at the Remedios Avenue test article storage area, the NC-31 test nose cone is still being worked on ahead of its testing campaign. Meanwhile, nearby at the production site, construction of new ship and booster sections continues frenetically inside the tents and star factory building. A likely not-for-flight ship payload bay section was spotted outside in the ring yard. We think it's not for flight as it is the first one that SpaceX built inside the Star Factory building with new tooling. You can see it has no pins for thermal protection system tiles, and apart from Ship 27, we've yet to see an upcoming ship with payload bay without tiles. Next up, back at the launch site, work continues on Booster 7 and the orbital launch mount to prepare them for the orbital flight test. We'll go over this in more detail in just a moment, but first, Remember how last week Ship 25 was transported to Massey's? Well, I went for a walk down there to check up on it. Here, we can see not only Ship 25, but also test tanks S26.1, B7.1, and, as of a few days ago, the B6 test tank. Here also resides the nose cone structural test rig that we sometimes call the nose cone jail, which is undergoing modifications in support of being used to test the NC31 test nose cone. In case you missed it or just don't remember, Massey's is the site of a former gun range, which has since been moved a few miles up Highway 4. SpaceX bought this site and now uses it to test nose cones, development test tanks, and all kinds of other hardware. Ship 25 was cryo-tested a few months ago. Then it was rolled back to the production site where engines were installed on it. Then it was rolled back to the launch site where it sat on Pad B, and we were actually expecting, at least for a time, for it to perform some static fire testing, which of course never happened. So seeing it hooked up to a cryo station makes me think that the thing being tested here isn't Ship 25, but actually the ground systems at Massey's. As longtime viewers know, I love to say, more data is more better. So this isn't exactly surprising. Next up, the SPMTs used to roll Ship 25 to Massey's were moved back to the production site, which means this could be Ship 25's home for at least a little while. These SPMTs are used for moving vehicles and tanks around Starbase, so they're a valuable asset and are generally not left sitting around, as they are in high demand. In case you forgot, SPMT is an acronym that stands for Self-Propelled Modular Transporter. If you need a mnemonic to remember the acronym, just think SpaceX's preferred method of transport. SPMT. Back at the production site, we saw Ship 28's nose cone receiving its lifting points. This is one of the steps that we usually see prior to the beginning of stacking for the top of the ship. We've seen Ship 27 recently stacked, so maybe we'll soon see Ship 28 stacking in the high bay. Speaking of the high bay, this is where Ship 26 ended up after rolling back from the launch site. Now it's there keeping Ship 27 company. The production site is certainly a very crowded place lately, and with more ships and boosters coming along, they might need a new place for them. <coughs> new Mega Bay. <coughs> Sorry, I don't know what came over me. Moving right along, 
Last week, we talked about the installation of shields on the orbital launch mount and how that process is going. I also mentioned that almost half of the shields had been installed. Well, this week, the other half is almost done. Here in this video, we can see how they're lifting the shields for the south side of the mount, which is now complete. This in particular is a piece of shielding covering the upper portion of the staircase going into the orbital launch mount, hence its peculiar geometry. Back at the Rocket Garden, this week we saw the NC-31 test nose cone finally receive its black tip. This is part of the testing rig that is used for pulling and pushing on the nose cone to produce the loads it experiences during flight. Its rollout to the Massey test site might now be right around the corner, so definitely keep an eye on Starbase Live for when that happens, as we'll of course be able to show that rollout as it happens. Speaking of rollouts, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the awesome metal prints we have available at shop.nasaspaceflight.com. We have this killer shot of one of Ship 24's previous rolls to the pad. We also have a variety of other metal prints of Starship full stack testing, and other rockets as well. They look great, they don't need a frame, and they're easy to hang. All right, let's get back to it. Next door to where the NC-31 test nose cone is at the Rocket Garden, work continues on Ship 24 to prepare it for flight. This week, we've seen workers continue to put more tiles on the nose cone and also work securing one of its aft flaps. Not far from here, new construction work is ongoing at the former scrapyard. This is the location where scrapped hardware used to be stored and scrapped, and now we can see groundwork is underway here. If you remember me talking about all the Ship 22 parts getting scrapped during previous updates, this is where all of that took place. Another interesting thing that's happened on top of that new construction is a new drilling rig, a Bauer BG-28H, has arrived at the production site and could be used for drilling new foundation piles. Could this be the beginnings of a new Mega Bay? Perhaps Mega Bay 2, Electric Boogaloo, or maybe Ultra Bay? It certainly seems like space at the production site is still limited and more is needed. An extra bay would come in handy for that as they build more ships and boosters, and construction of them aside, they need a place to put all of them. Another potential clue here is that new LR-1750 crane I mentioned earlier. A similar model of crane was used to assemble the Mega Bay last year. So are we going to see a new Mega Bay rising up from the ground at the production site? It's hard to say, but it certainly wouldn't be surprising. Next up, let's talk the orbital launch mount. While early in the week, SpaceX completed the shielding on the south side, shielding on the north side of the orbital launch mount was completed in the second half of the week. Hang on a second here though. Using north and south to denote sides of the orbital launch mount and of the vehicle kind of makes my teeth itch every time we do it. So let's take a moment to discuss how SpaceX does it and how we should as well. SpaceX and many other aerospace companies use a three-axis coordinate system. The y-axis is left to right, so plus y is port, aka left, and minus y is starboard, aka right. X is the vertical axis, so plus x is forward and minus x is aft, and Z is the final axis, with plus Z being the leeward dorsal or tileless side of a shipper booster. Also, that's the side the tower is on, and minus Z being the windward side. That's the side with tiles, the side that faces into the airstream during entry. So to rephrase, SpaceX early in the week completed shielding on the minus Y side of the orbital launch mount, and later in the week, they completed shielding on the plus Y side. Here we can see the last major piece going into place. The only two major panels left to install on the orbital launch mount are on the minus Z side. Although by the time you're watching this, I wouldn't be surprised if those have been installed already. All right, that's it for this week. Let us know what you thought in the comments. And as always, don't forget, be excellent to each other.